I'm Michael Bain. It's Wednesday morning, and yes, I am triggered. As always, we're coming to you from Dragon House Studios at the secret hidden bunker of the Rocky Mountains, where even as we speak right now, gnomes are loading up cars and trucks worth of everything we're going to need to go to Las Vegas for the SHOT Show. Uh, that also includes, gosh, emergency medical supplies, a hyperbaric chamber, whatever we can do to tamp down whatever horrific disease sweeps the floor of the SHOT Show. I'm kind of looking forward to it. A lot of new stuff this year, as I said before. We haven't had a real serious new product year in a while. Well, 2020 is going to be the new product year. But before I go off to crazy Vegas, where I, I want to tell you the truth, actually, I have set aside $20 American money to gamble. I may come back with as much as 30 I'm going to live large. Anyway, a couple of things I wanted to talk about you before we headed off to Las Vegas, catch you up on, on uh, some products here. The, this is a, the, I've got two 9mm AR platform pistols here on the table. Uh, this first one, you've seen a while back. I made some changes in it. That's why I brought it out here. Uh, it is uh, pieces of my very first AR-15 pistol, which was presented to me by Spikes Tactical. Like, wow, I don't know. Um, back in the dawn of time when dinosaurs ruled the earth. And uh, I've shot it more than I've shot any other AR-15 style pistol, 9mm. What changed on it was originally this gun came with, uh, at that point in time, what was totally common, which was using an AR-15. 9mm magazine, that one that was designed for the AR-15 9mm submachine gun. That submachine gun came about in 1982 because Colt realized that there was a market for submachine guns at that point, especially 9mm submachine guns, and all that money was going either to the Israeli Uzi or to the German MP5. So Colt thought, well, we ought to do one, and it ought to be on an AR platform because that's comfortable because that's what our military trains on. So basically they roll that out. And the, the way it worked was rather than design a lower receiver that was specifically for the, uh, the, the 9mm magazines, which were in fact modified Uzi magazines, which was because there was about a billion gazillion Uzi magazines on Earth. They just uh, Colt engineers made a block that set in the magazine well and you know clamped down and that you allowed you to raise you know, to use the Colt 9mm magazine. Well, in the ensuing years that passed, that standard, the Colt standard magazine, kind of faded from view. Uh, and what replaced it was, wait for it, wait for it, Glock. The rise of Glock and the availability of Glock 9mm magazines essentially caused Glock to become the de facto choice for magazines. You also see it, you know, it's competition, PCC competition. Go out there and look at those PCC uh, pistol caliber carbine rifles and see how many of them don't use Glock magazines. Glock magazines have a, a great reputation for being very good, very cheap, and those things are true. So. I got a call from Stern Defense, and Stern Defense is one of those smaller companies that basically flies under the radar. Uh, they make a lot of AR parts, uh, especially a lot of pistol caliber, carbine type AR parts, uh, 9mm, 40-45. And uh, when they first called me, they said, hey, do you have any 9mm pistols or 9mm rifles, AR platform rifles, that run off the Colt magazines? I said, yeah, I do. They said, would you like them to run off the Glock magazines? I said, yeah, I would. And they said, well, that's no problem. You don't need to buy a new lower. All you need to buy is this, which you've seen. Basically, it goes in the magazine well. It drops out just as if it was a magazine. This is the conversion part. And then this little bad boy slips right in as if it was a magazine. And once it's in, what you have now is the gun converted to a standard Glock magazine. When you want to drop the magazine here, trigger finger drop. It's actually a very quick way to drop a magazine. You're here, you drop it, it pops right, next magazine goes in. I thought, and I said at the time, this was an absolutely brilliant design. And I know from the number of people who called me and said, 
where can we buy that? A lot of other people thought the same thing. They also have it for Beretta magazines, for Smith & Wesson M&P magazines. So in short, whatever your carry gun is, if you want to use a pistol caliber carbine, you've got one that, that you would like to adapt to that specific type magazine, uh, Stern Defense can help you out. By the way, they also offer milled bolts. One of the issues when you change over from a, a Colt style bolt, uh, a Colt style uh, a bolt for a Colt magazine, the Uzi magazine delivers the round straight up. And so the bolt is just going tonk, 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 tonk. But the Glock magazine is delivered at a slight angle, and it requires a minor cut on the bolt. It's not a big deal. Any machine shop can do it to you for probably the lordly sum of 15 bucks. This is a total Stearns Defense upper. And I want to just point out a couple of things. It's a great 9mm upper. It's got a super comp on it. I mean, these guys have put some thought into how what you can get from a compensated 9mm. The new thing to show you is this. Stern decided to make their own triggers that focused on the PCC market, which is just huge, huge. Now, USPSA, IDPA, uh, some two-gun matches on their own, some three-gun matches allowed to use a pistol caliber carbine. It is one of the driving trends. So Stern said, hey, why don't we make a trigger, but we want to make a trigger from the ground up for pistol caliber carbine. And you get it polished, you get it black. But basically, it's two-stage trigger, two pounds on the first, the take up, and then a really crisp four-pound trigger. Uh, I dropped the black version in here. It comes with a set of no-walk pins, so your pins don't loosen up or slide back and forth out. And it is everything Stern said it is. It is a very crisp, excellent four-pound trigger, which is pretty much what I'm going to want for competition. I've shot PCC, and uh, once again, I don't want a super light trigger for PCC. I just want to... So, that's a little bit of where I am with this. And, and yes, you know, a, a name point M4 military M4 is, is just a spec overkill. But Stern Defense doing really, really great work. I'm looking forward to seeing him at the SHOT Show. When we come back, we're going to talk about a gun that you have all asked me to talk about. This week's trigger is sponsored by Lipsy's and their Gun of the Month. The innovative firearms for Franklin Armory. Lucid Optics, on target and under budget. Tandem Cross and their great selection of 22 parts. And Cimarron Firearms, the king of the cowboys. Welcome back to Triggered in our week before the SHOT Show in Las Vegas where I am looking forward to going to the French pastry shop that's in the Venetian. You gotta have to look forward to something, right? This is a gun that you saw two weeks ago on Shooting Gallery. The first season for our, our anniversary season, our 20th season, our very first show, I very specifically made it about Franklin Armory uh, in Minden, Nevada, where it's a great place to get Bosque food. And Bosque food is really super. But, Franklin is one of the most innovative operations in, in the country. They focus on building guns for a lot of places where you can't just buy an AR upper and lower. Uh, the slave states, of course, California, uh, Rhode Island, uh, gosh, New York, a little bit of Connecticut. Those states, and, and, and maybe Virginia, we'll probably know a little bit better about that next week. But among the other things that Franklin builds is, is a binary trigger. And we talked about that on Shooting Gallery. What's a binary trigger? Well, with a binary trigger, you pull back and it goes bang. And then as you let it go forward, it goes bang. So it goes bang, 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 bang. This is not a huge, a huge like new thing. Shotgunners have been using release triggers uh, pretty much since they were shotguns. Uh, I have... Uh, uh, in Europe, for example, I've talked to shotgunners who prefer release triggers because they say they, they're quicker on rising birds. Uh, I, whether that's true or not, it, if you think it's true, it's true. So, same thing in competition. We set up the uh, NSSF Great Outdoor Games for ESPN. We set up that uh, competition, clays competition, where it was shot at night. You had to shoot a clay as it moved through a great big steel circle. Almost every shooter went to a release trigger. So what they would do is, is they would, before they would call pull, 
they'd pull the trigger. It didn't go bang, so they'd go, pull, pull a trigger, clay would go, and they'd let go like that, really quick. <clears throat> because it's, it's not a pulling motion. It's, it's, when you pull a trigger, there, you have to be very specific in pushing that trigger to the rear. It's a very specific movement. It's a movement you can screw up pretty easily. However, on a release trigger, what you're doing is coming off it. If you try to ride a release trigger out, it doesn't work. It's not designed to do that. You let it go and then it fires. So the problem with, with binary triggers, pull and release triggers, before Franklin Armory was that it was almost impossible to make them where they couldn't be bumped off, go full auto. Again, this machinery inside the gun is not particularly complicated. When you take apart an AR for the first time, you know, there's lots of little springs and little penny things, but when you just lay it out and go like, oh, that's not complicated at all. Especially a pistol caliber carbine, there's no gas system. It's a blowback. Bolt blows back, spring pushes back. You know how that works. So the great genius at Franklin Armory, and, and some of those guys really are geniuses, said, well, we can build a binary trigger that's, for all, in all, all intents and purposes, bulletproof. You can't turn it into a full auto trigger. And it, it's pretty much damn near impossible to bump off. So you've got a trigger that works, bam, 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 bam. And it works so well that you can, in fact, use it in competition. That, to me, is always where you draw that line. You say, well, I, I, uh, can I use it in competition? Because competition has a way of shaking out things that don't work. Uh, if you go through my gun room, you go out in the gu my gun room and start going through stuff, you'll find a history of practical shooting ideas that failed. Because I would get them, I would buy them, I'd be sent them, I I'd use them, and I'd say, well, that didn't work worth a damn. So, anyway, <laughs> this is that binary trigger gun. We're going to put some rounds through it to show you how it works. It is built on an Angstat Arms UDP-9. Fred Angstat, friend of mine, a uh, great guy. Once again, an innovator in this industry. And, you know, we are an industry of small companies. You know, so everybody makes a, you know, certainly Ruger makes PCC. Smith & Wesson makes pistol caliber carbine. But the innovation comes from guys like Fred Angstad. And he designed this upper and lower. You know, it's a, you can see the little more slant because it's carrying the Glock magazines. In many ways, it just looked prettier. Designed his own bolt system. Uh, and it was a really good pistol caliber carbine. So I took it out there to Franklin Armory, Jay Jacobson and, and uh, Son Nadell and the guys, and, and they said, you got one, you got a gun you want a binary trigger in. I said, well, this is the best 9mm PCC I own right now. Uh, if you say, this is, a, this is a PCC I'm willing to pick up and run with, this, it would be this one. Uh, it's very, it's got a burst fast fire on it right now. But uh, they said, okay, not a big deal. Uh, one of the more interesting things about their binary trigger is let's say you pull the trigger, bang, and then you think, wait a minute, wait a minute, I don't want to fire another shot. OMG, what can I do? OMG, what you can do is you can click the lever back to semi. And buzz, it's ambidextrous, so you can kick it with your thumb on the other side, and it will not fire on the release. Important thing. Uh, say, okay, I'm doing this, I go bang, and then, no, I don't want another bang. I've, I've screwed up. I'm, I'm aiming at the wrong time doing that. It's just simply a matter of moving from moving from binary back to semi, and it disconnects the release trigger. So I also wanted to mention I'm I'm going to spend some time with Fred at shot because he's got. Another innovation. He actually was in the runnings for a, a U.S. military machine, new machine gun, which is a trick because generally no small company gets very far at all. And, and Fred did. Fred got farther and essentially designed a modern machine gun for the 21st century, 9mm machine gun. And uh, now it would be available for civilians. Now it would be available for civilians. And what Fred did is create the bizarre bastard off child of HK MP5 and his own 9mm pistol. I think it's called an uh, MDP9 and it has a side charging handle and it has a roller delay operation 
which is really good. You know, that's MP5, the roller delay operation. I think we've done four episodes of shooting gallery on roller delay, uh, roller delay operation. But that gun will have roller, roller delay operation. I believe it actually does use an MP5 barrel. Uh, weighs like 14 inches and uh, um, weighs 3.6 pounds, 3.5 pounds. Makes it a pound lighter than, than a 50 AE Desert Eagle. Put that in perspective. Just a couple inches longer. Uh, also, because it doesn't need a buffer tube, because that's not how a roller block system leads, he will have a 1913 rail in the back, which allows you to attach folding stocks to it, folding braces to it. Uh, a system essentially that's been pioneered by SIG with their MPX and is now considered standard in the industry. So those guns aren't shipping yet. I look forward to shooting one at media day and I look forward to spending a little time with Fred. So anyway, I'm Michael Bain. This is Triggered. We're here every Wednesday morning. Tune in because next week is shot coverage.